How many times should one forgive his brother if he sins against him? It seems that there was a local tradition at the time that seven times one ought to forgive someone he sinned against and he asked forgiveness for us. And our Savior, who is all merciful, our Savior, who is long suffering, merciful, par excellence, katekshakim eleimon, the merciful one, the all merciful one. He answered and said, not seven times, but seventy times seven. If your brother sins against you, and he asks forgiveness, you have to forgive him. Seventy times seven is not a specific situation, but it means countless times. I'm not very good at math. How much is seventy times seven? Four ninety. How much? Four ninety. Four ninety. Four hundred ninety times. What can a person sin four hundred ninety times in one day against another person? I guess they could, but I think it would be a little difficult. But if they ask forgiveness, you have to forgive them. In other words, without end. Our all-merciful God is the one who gave his name, Pandeleim, to the saint we are celebrating today. He was not named such by his father. He was named Pandoleim when he was born, which in Greek means in all things a lion. A child would grow up and be very courageous and brave, <clears throat> like a lion. His father, Thropius, was an idolater and very pious in idolatry. His mother was a Christian. <clears throat> you see, we had mixed marriages in the first centuries because the Christians were a great minority. And therefore, they were not enough. So that they would later, when Christianity became very popular, and the adults were the great minority and almost eclipsed. Then they were made canons not to have mixed marriages. Now we have gone back to those first centuries where we are a great minority, the Christians. So we should not be surprised if there are mixed marriages. His father was a patrician background, aristocratic, Roman and therefore they had to marry in their own caste. His mother was also from an illustrious family, Patricia, therefore she had to marry a similar person from the same aristocracy. When the child from Benjamin was young, his mother reposed. We are not told by the life or by the oral tradition if she reposed from an illness or if she was one of the martyrs of the 20,000 burned in Nicomedia, and this was at the time, right before St. Pandemium. At the time of St. Pandemium, that the 20,000 were burned in the night of the Nativity of our Savior in their churches in Nicomedia. Nicomedia at that time had become the capital of the Roman Empire. Because Rome had been sacked, and because many plagues had broken out in the city, the emperors abandoned ancient Rome. St. Constantine had not appeared yet, built a new Rome where the ancient the way the time of Byzantium was named after him after Constantinople. And because the climate was very beautiful in Nicomedia, they moved the capital to Nicomedia. That was the residence of the emperor at the time of the martyrdom of the twenty thousand. That's why there was such malice against the Christians, especially Nicomedia. So after his mother's repose, who when he was very young, taught him about that our Savior taught him to love the Lord Jesus. His father reared him as an idolater. At the time of the 20,000 that were burned in Comedia, they asked the bishop, they pleaded with the bishop to hide. And he didn't want to. He wanted to be martyred with his flock. They said, if you're all martyred and there are no clergy left, there will be no seed. There will not be Christians again in this city, which is the capital. It is necessary for you to hide so that there can be Christians after. And the holy bishop hid. He later he himself martyred. He was beheaded. Antim was the holy bishop of Nicomedia. Among those of the clergy that hid were three priests, Hermoros, Hermocrats, and Hermicos. And they were hiding in a house in Nicomedia. And it so happened that every day in the morning when 
Don Don Leon would leave the house of his father to go to the palace. He would pass right by that house where the three priests were hiding. Don Don Leon was a comely youth and also very intelligent from a great family. The emperor was told concerning the youth and uh, he was amazed at his calmness and his wisdom, his manners, and therefore he wanted him to be apprenticed to the court physicians, to become himself the doctor and the court physician after they have succession. He would have had a very illustrious position in the palace to be court physician in time. So every day we go in the morning to the palace in order to be taught by the court physicians there. Passing by the house where the three priests were hiding, they would look out from the shutter. They had closed the shutters of the house, but with the crack and sinner water, so they were able to look out and saw the youth. From the face, the countenance of the youth, he understood that this was a, a vessel of election, as he said in the scriptures, as our Savior said concerning St. Paul, Saul, Saul was converted on the way to Damascus. So one day he opened the shutter and he spoke to the young man. The young man was startled. He turned around and looked. The visage and the appearance of Ermola, the elder, was such that the youth was taken back. These holy ones, they had something about them when you saw them. And I have experienced this with holy elders that I knew in my lifetime. And you knew they weren't common mortal men like us. That they were God bearers, they had Christ in them, they had God in them. Something very special. It was a seal upon them, the very visage, the very presence. Without words, without anyone telling you anything, you understood. One was awed. One is awed in the presence of these holy ones. Such was the experience of the young man from the land when he saw for the first time at Wallows. And asked him concerning his background and one thing or another, and that his mother was Christian, his father was an idolater, his father had the whole house filled with idols every morning, would have sacrificed the idols. Just like pious Christians have icons in all the rooms of the house, so he had idols in the, in the rooms of the house. And just like we say our morning prayers, and we uh, light candles and lamps and incense, before the holy icons, he had sacrificed it every morning before his idols. So Saint Hermon was asked the little young, I mean the young youth and his mother was the Saint Pandelin. Of the two faiths, your father and your mother, which do you love more most? When I was small, I said I love my mother's faith because she spoke to me about the Lord Jesus. But my mother says, let me orphan when I was quite young. And my father has reared me an adult, so I like the views of my father, the idols of my father, and I reverence them. Well, this became the occasion for the holy one, for the holy martyr, to be catechized by the three priests, especially by St. Amoros. He told them he was going to the palace every day because he was apprenticed to the physician of the palace. And St. Amoros says, I know a physician much superior than any physician in the palace. The physician of the palace cannot raise the dead. A, born, a man born blind or without eyes, he can't give him eyes or open his eyes. A man born a paralytic, palsy, he can't make him walk. But the physician that I know, he's able to resurrect the dead, give eyes. That people don't have eyes. There's no illness that he cannot heal. This greatly arose the curiosity in the, the youth if there is such a position. So in time he was catechized, he was baptized. In the life of St. Pandirim, we have this which is recorded in the scriptures that even before he was baptized, he worked a great miracle. And once the disciples went to our Savior and they said, we hear a report that certain people in your name are working signs, but they are not part of us. They're not disciples. Therefore, prohibit them. And then Savior answered, 
If in my name they are working signs, he says, they're on the way, come in, he says. So don't hinder them, he says. Such was our Singh Pandeleon, when he was still unbaptized with Pandoleon. One day, walking in the way, he found a, a child that had been bitten by a viper, a very poisonous snake, and the child lay dead, frothing at the mouth, dead. And the snake was sitting with him right there, away from the youth of the, the child that he had bitten. Immediately, remembering all that he was taught by Hermonos, Simpandil says, Lord Jesus, this is all true that the Hermonos, the teacher, the priest, has been telling me. Resurrect that child. And the child was resurrected with that one word in the name of our Lord Jesus. Just like Peter, remember Peter? Peter and John, they went to the temple at the beautiful gate. There was that paralytic begging. And he asked for alms. And Peter says, I have no silver, I have no gold, I have no gold coins, no money. But that which I have, I give you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, arise, walk. And with one leap, the paralytic <laughs> was on his feet and was walking. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Great is the name of the Lord Jesus. In his name, so many of you. Peter later made that other prayer, Anaeus, the name, in Lida, to walk. And while there was informed that Tabitha and Joppa, Joppa had reposed and were preparing for bear and went quickly and resurrected Tabitha in the name of the Lord Jesus. So now Pandarion became even more zealous after this miracle and he, became, he was baptized in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. His name remained Pandaleon. It was only at his martyrdom that a voice was heard when he was being decapitated. And it said, no longer should be called Pandoleon, but Pandeleimon, in all things merciful. That's why I say our Savior gave his own appellation, his own name, the all merciful one, to Pandeleimon. A very great honor, and a great, very great gift. And gave him the gift of healing. And in him is fulfilled that which the apostles heard from our Savior, the apostolic gift that was given of healing without payment. Freely he have received, freely grant to all and give to all. And therefore we have this group of saints, healers, doctors, who are called anarchiri, silverless, without silver, meaning without money, because the money at that time was silver coins or gold coins. And we have a whole choir of these holy ones. We celebrate in the month of October the synaxis of 22 holy anarchy, but since the olden times, how many others have been added to this choir of the holy unmercenary healers in our own times? St. Nectarius of Wonderworka Vegana, the polyclinic. <laughs> there is no illness which he is not able to heal. St. John of Kronstadt, the unbelievable great healer of the Russian Empire. Throughout the vast empire and abroad, worked healings, whoever sent a telegram, whoever wrote him, whoever appealed to him, just with one word, just with one prayer. Hadzi Effendi, Arsenius, the Cappadocian, who reposed on the island of Corfu, 1924, the exchange of populations of the Christians who came to, what well, Christians remained after the massacres that survived, came to Greece. Many that won the world first and continue are added these holy ones that are called unmercenaries that freely heal us by appealing to them. I knew people, many refugees of the Greek people of Asia Minor, the Christians of Asia Minor when I was a child. The neighborhood I grew up had a lot of refugees from Cappadocia, from Pontus, also from Nicomedia. Nicomedia is called Izmid now in Turkish. Just like Nikia is called Iznik. And Smyrna is called Izmir. So I knew refugees and they would describe to me that they had the martyrion of Simpandirim, the martyrion of the 20,000 in, in, their, in their city. And at the martyrion of the 20,000 were many bones burned of the 20,000 that had been burned. The grave of Simpandirim was subterranean with many steps down in the earth. 
and next to his grave was that of Senor Molas. They celebrated the feast of Senor Molas at Mipas and Mocrates as one feast with St. Pandirima. So the feast began yesterday in the Comedia. The whole city was festive with the three teachers of St. Pandirima, the three priests, and then the day after St. Pandirima. As in the instance of St. George, where there are martyrs preceding and the martyrs after the feast of St. George that believe St. George. So we have in the instance of our holy St. Pandirima, so many that accompany him, preceded and come and follow because of his witness that were converted because of his miracles, etc., because of his martyrdom. And in this martyrdom, we have something which is first heard of both in all the scripture, Old, New Testament, and all the lives. Animals witnessed. Animals became martyrs. Uh, the emperor was very angry against St. Pantherino. And he threw him into an arena with lions and panthers and tigers, tear him apart and eat him up. And they were like sheep, like Daniel with the lions in the lion's den. And they reverenced him and went and licked his hands. The emperor got so mad against the animals that they didn't uh, eat up St. Pantherino and tear him apart. He had them slaughtered on the spot. And then another sign followed after that because they bore witness to the Creator by their death, by their slaughter. It was fulfilled that which the Psalm says, pass up me, that every uh, breath praise the Lord, eh? And things in the in, 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 in mountains and hills and valleys and, and frost and snow and rain. And, <laughs> after the animals were slaughtered, they remained incorrupt. No bad odor came forth of uh, the bodies, of the, of the corpses, of the tomata, carcasses of the animals. And uh, many of the adults were amazed that they saw this. And the emperor therefore ordered that they burn all those animals that were slaughtered so they would not continue to be a witness with their incorruption. And, uh, the Holy Saint was tied to an olive tree when he was beheaded. The executioner didn't want to behead him because he saw so many miracles. And the saint said, do what you have been commanded. And only then he beheaded him. And milk came out instead of blood from his neck when they beheaded him. The milk of piety which he was given by his mother, and which found in realization and maturity through sin and moros and lupus and mokrati, the teachers that converted him. That olive tree blossomed forth on the spot and had ripe olives on the spot so that even the tree bore witness with, with all these marvelous happenings. And the emperor ordered the tree be cut down from the roots and burned. Mm -hmm. So they cut down the olive tree and burned it. But from the Roots, another, till 1924, the exchange of populations, there was an olive tree that was a descendant of that olive tree that was seen outside on top where the tomb of St. Pandelian was. The refugees would tell me when the Russians would go by droves, by troves, by troves to the Holy Land before the revolution, and even from Odessa by ships, they would stop in Nicomedia, it was a port city because St. Pandemian is such a beloved saint of the Russian Empire, and the great monastery of St. Pandemian is the Russian monastery, and the holy mountain of the 20 monasteries. And so many bear his name among the Russian people, as, as also among Greek people, and other part of the Russian Pandemian. And they would all go and chant paratheses in the uh, unison all together, as they do usually the molebans, at the tomb of St. Pandemian and St. Hermolaus, and uh, they would visit the other shrines in the community. All that is gone for our sins. Uh, I love that saint from my youth and because he brought the miracle in so my brother with tuberculosis was healed without an operation, and my brother became a doctor also. And I dreamt from a young lad to go one day to Nicomedia to find these shrines, which I heard about. But I never got to Nicomedia. 
I did get references, and I owe this to Bishop Dimitrius, who was a deacon at the time. And he said, you're telling me this might be your last time you're coming to hear us. It's just opposite, as you know, the Lord ways. So we went to Ephesus. And I went to the church of St. John, the theologian, where his tomb is, and also to the cave for seven youths of Ephesus, the seven sleepers. So anyhow, uh, I always said, maybe one day I'll go. Then one priest from Thessalonica, Matthew by name, he uh, told me on the phone because I said, now don't go, Father, I went. And I found nothing. I said, what do you mean you found nothing? The, 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 the refugees told me where these are in this. Father, I have heard also, like you. Actually, someone gifted me on my name day, many years ago, a book printed in the 1700s in English. I Maybe 1600s, we have it somewhere in our special library. And it was on the city of Nicomedia. And they had a map, and they had uh, um, the location of the Martyria in the city of the 20,000 of St. Pondelem and the Molos, etc. He says, Father, the cities were destroyed in 1922, like Smyrna was burned and other places, uh, and uh, they built over everything. I found no ruins, nothing from Roman times or pre or after. Outside of the city, a small distance, is an amphitheater from Roman times, and that's the only antiquity in the area of Nicomedia. But in the town itself, a small city, town city, there is nothing. So we don't know where the Holy Spring was, we don't know where the olive tree was, where the tombs were, where the martyrs, nothing. For instance, in the, in, in, in the service of St. Nicholas, and the service of St. Nicholas was written when Mira of Nicia was still going, great, and they had that great church there with the relics in the tomb. <clears throat> and it says in the Liti of St. Nicholas, if my revelation should ever be silent on your feast, which was unimaginable in their days, that there would be no Christians left in my revelation. But if the city should ever be silent, said, the whole world would cry out, this is in a great voice, because of your miracles of St. Nicholas. So now, Nicomedia is gone for the Christians. And the shrines are, but not our holy St. Pandelema. Wherever he is celebrated on this day and his feast, it is Nicomedia, living Nicomedia. And we are the Nicomedians, and we are the citizens of the city of God. And, uh, and these are our patrons, our saints. A great thing to have reverence, to have piety, to have patrons. They are protectors. And I will tell you of the many miracles I've been hearing. A great miracle worked in our days. Just. A week ago, we had the funeral of uh, George Paides, a very sweet man, amazing man, Pondian. And um, I went to the funeral, and Dimitri and Paraskevura came from the Cape. They retired to the Cape. And uh, she brought two big market bags with five loaves for the five uh, Arthroplasia and Prospera. And she said, just for the feast of St. And I said, fine. But then I said to myself, but her name is Paraskevi. She, she should have had him for the St. Paraskevi, her patron saint. No, Pandelim, which is St. Pandelim, he worked as a great miracle. Oh, I said, really? Yes, and it was today, one year. Last year, on this feast, they were returning to the Cape by car. And a big, big Delica. Delica in Greek is a nickname for these big lorries, these big trucks. Huge. Hit them. And she says, when I saw that coming on us, it was the speed. I took the hand of uh, Dimitri, I said, that's it, goodbye, we're finished. And so the car was total wreck. And there wasn't a scratch on it. The police came, the fire came, the ambulance came. And uh, it, 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 it was with difficulty to, to come out because it was so crashed with a heap of twisted metal, broken glasses. Not even one drop of blood, not one scratch, nothing. They were in little days, as if, you know, but they were sitting in, in all that crushed car, etc. The firemen couldn't put it, the police couldn't put it, but the paramedics, no one could put it. With. When they were standing outside, we think that they were bystanders, like others rushed to see what happened, and they didn't come out of that crash. So they asked for his identification, and he took out his wallet, Dimitri, and to get out his license, and a little card, icon card of St. Pandelima fell out. 
the ones we have in plastic. And uh, they said, what's that? And the Torah said, our saint, our patron today. And they were Orthodox Christians. They didn't make the sign of the cross seeing this great miracle. But the man, uh, the officer put up his hand while he says, that's the only explanation. We have someone upstairs who says, otherwise, says, you wouldn't have come out alive out of this crash. If you did, you would be a paraplegic or a invalid. Broken back, bones, hands, feet, ribs, necks. Uh, so he says, you must have someone upstairs who says that took care of you. Otherwise, it cannot be explained. <coughs> so this be First and foremost, our creator, our Lord Jesus, then the Holy Queen of all, Pandanasa, the Virgin Mariam, our mother, the mother of all Christians, our guardian angel, the saint that we bear the name, etc., etc., all the holy ones of God. They are our fathers, our mothers, our brothers, our sisters. We are one family, one body, members of the same body. Blessed are they that love our Savior, that love the saints. Blessed are they that celebrate the feast and have piety. They have a holy protection, a holy alliance, which cannot be compared to any protection, any insurance, any alliance here below. And we see it again and again, and we hear it in our own days and our own times. But as Buddha says, as long as we're alive, we're always going to have the five loaves and the first for the feast of the saints when the name is it saved in this peace, he says, in certain death. May our Savior always guide us and fill us with hope and peace, and may he heal through the prayers of the Holy Healer, Sipandir, and all our sick. Is there anyone who is not ill? Is there anyone who does not have a trauma? Is there anyone who does not have a sorrow? The sisters came last night to give me a gift. And they brought me a gift that we have it in the UT. Joy of all the, and the unexpected joy. I kind of, the unexpected joy. They said we bought it at Optina, Father, the shop at Optina, on a visit. Well, it was very meaningful because I have great sorrow faith. Many sorrows we have. And unexpected joy, the Holy Tales of us. Unexpected joy are saints. Without them, we will not be, we would be able to survive. Without them, we would have no breath in us. And because of their love, because of their presence, we are encouraged, we are healed of all our maladies. So let us therefore always with piety celebrate the holy ones of God and call upon them. Especially this calmly saying, when they the wonder work of the healer.